Oh my god, hi. So, today I watched the, uh, the Bratza documentary, and, uh, I have thoughts, honestly. Like, I was a kid in the 80s, a teenager in the 90s, right? So the Brat Pack movies, as, as they came to be known, uh, were a big part of my movie experience. You know, Breakfast Club, uh, Pretty in Pink, Weird Science, all of those those stars and all the movies that they made. Like, that was a thing that, you know, we watched, we talked about. Uh, and seeing how that label got slapped upon this group of talented young actors and the repercussions of it, which, you know, as an outsider, we don't think about these things. We heard, oh, the Brat Pack. We thought it was cool. You know, we thought it it had, you know, these were the, the kids that we wanted to hang out with, right? The young adults that we looked up to. You know, we watched them in the movies and the movies resonated because that was the, the shift in Hollywood where they were making teenage movies. And they, there were smart ones that, you know, reflected the the times. Sometimes, maybe not so much, you know, Back to, Back to the Future didn't really. But, you know, you get my point is that, you know, these are the movies that we grew up with. And now they've become seminal classics, classics that, you know, we're starting to show our kids. And we still talk about today. And these actors, many of them are still working. And we're, you know, we've seen the trajectory of their careers over these last 30 odd years. But seeing, hearing, and listening to this documentary, hearing Demi Moore and Emilio talk about, you know, their perspectives on being labeled the Brat Pack and Rob Lowe and his perspective. And basically this, this documentary is mainly Andrew McCarthy's journey to reconcile his place in the Brat Pack and his thoughts on it and its discovery and, you know, recognition and healing and reconnecting with people that he, you know, made movies with at the cusp of his career when he was just taking off and the impact of all of these things. And it, it, it really makes you think, you know, now in the social media age, we feel closer to our actors. You know, we feel we, we can reach out and communicate them. We, we, you know, giggle with glee when Mark Hamill likes our tweet or Jerry Ryan responds to it, you know, and nerds have become cool and, you know, sci-fi and Marvel is making huge gains. But in the eighties, when, you know, a lot of our idolization of these actors and th their roles was a far more isolated thing. We were far further removed, you know? Yes, we had our teen magazines. And there were interviews and news coverage and things like that, but it wasn't the same. There was this air, air of mystique about Hollywood and these young actors. So when we read these things about the Brat Pack and we saw these adventures they were having, we, we thought that, you know, that was cool. We wanted to hang out with them. We wanted to emulate them, dress like them, and live this fantastic life, not understanding the, the pressures that they were under as young up-and-coming actors who suddenly got this label slap voiced upon them and how it may have impacted their careers or at least impacted the choices that they made or the perceptions they had about themselves. So, you know, the, the Brat Pack has become the epitome of the, the Generation X story in some ways. Well, yes, of course, they were undeniably successful and they had money and, you know, but at the same time, it was that a generation that they were starting on the they were on the brink of a change within Hollywood and the old guard had to make a move to you know strike try to strike them down they they were became a a focus of change in an industry that or basically in a world that wasn't prepared for change and that's what the 80s were and the 90s even more so was the cusp of change technologically and socially and you know, they became a focus point for Gen X kids and even elder millennials to, you know, see a reflection of our of our lives through their movies. And we felt closer to them. We identified with their characters. We emulated their characters. And now, you know, as 
older adults, you know, 30 years later, and we're hearing these stories, it made me personally think back and realize just how easy it is for when you're in your 20s or in your teens and you get a, a label put upon you by other people, whether it's your peers or your elders, those things stick with you, especially the, the ones that have a negative connotation. And that's why now, especially in the content creation space, where we're seeing more older creators, more Gen X creators, and even boomer creators, and, you know, the, the rise of TikTok and other platforms, and even YouTube, you're seeing, you know, older creators entering the space and realizing that we have a voice. And it's funny to me when you think about it, because when we're when we were watching those movies in the 80s and in the 90s, you know, those teen movies about teenagers coming of age and discovering their voices. Now, it's, it's you know, the teenage movies haven't fundamentally changed, just maybe the, the language and the situations and the fact that teenagers now have a world full of cameras and social media and up-to-the-minute revelations of what we did. The things that we did when we were kids, if somebody had been recording those, half of us probably would have been cancelled before we even got to our 30s. <laughs> like, because we did dumb shit because nobody was watching. That That's the Gen X story. You know, nobody was watching the stupid shit we were doing except us when we saw it in the movies. And now with the, the 2020 vision of looking backwards, I can see where the choices I've made and the, the mistakes that I made and the things that, you know, I thought about myself were largely because of these labels that were put upon us. So with, with the Brat Pack and their, you know, shift from when they had that negative label put upon them and the way they all tried to you know many of them tried to separate themselves from it and separate themselves from each other because they didn't want to get lumped in together because of the, the impact on their career or whatever it was now seeing them looking back fondly and realizing that the trials and tribulations led to where they are now and reconnecting and discussing it, it's a beautiful thing to see in the documentary but it makes me wonder about the friends that I grew up with when I was a kid and where they are now, because for myself, having moved around Canada and the United States, you know, I didn't, was never in a place for very long for the most part, other than my very younger years. And then my high school years that I have a disconnect when it comes to my peers, because through different phases of my life, elementary school, for the most part, I had one group that I was around. And then junior high, I was in a completely different country around completely different people. And then I came back in high school and all those elementary school kids had grown up and gone through puberty and all of these things while I was gone. So I've always had this outsider perspective compared to the peer groups who are still friends or still talking and still connecting even now in our 40s. And I'm still the outsider guy watching... Andrew McCarthy's journey to reconnect and he felt like the outsider of the Brat Pack. I identify with that more than I thought I would. And seeing it this way, it makes me realize that maybe for myself, I need to reach out to some of these people and reconnect. And so it's, it's a very interesting documentary. It comes off as very honest and open. He meets with you know, his fellow Brat Pack members, he meets with casting directors of the time, directors of the time, and the original, uh, <laughs> the original poster <laughs> of the, uh, the, the first iteration of the Brat Pack label, the, the reporter who first put that out there, that immediately got snapped up and became part of the zeitgeist. And seeing that journey, it, you know, it's causing a lot of reflection of my life not because I'm some actor or, you know, anybody particularly important or famous. But the fundamental point is we go through things as kids, either with our peers or on our own. 
And as we become adults, we drift away and these relationships fall apart or just stop. We have to, we hold this baggage of the past with us. And unless we process it through therapy, which I definitely recommend, but also reaching out and, you know, trying to clear the air with people that perhaps we could, you know, put some of these things behind us or just shift our perspective to see the, the good that came out of some of the bad, if there was any. Of course, there's not always going to be. But I think this documentary about the Brat Pack and these young actors and how they've all gone on, many of them in their own careers or different choices, it's very much a Gen X story. And it's indicative of the the Gen X experience, but also the perspective of looking back and going, God, that moment really fucking sucked. And I haven't quite figured out how to put it behind me, but maybe I can find a way to do that. And for some of us, unfortunately now in our forties, it, it's too late to reconnect with some people because we've already lost them. And as we get older, we're going to lose more. So this very much was a reflection of the Gen X experience and seeing these actors and the things that they, that we loved them for also had such a negative moment for them when we thought it was catchy because we were had that outsider separation of just being moviegoers or fans and the magazines. We didn't get this glimpse look in that now with social media and YouTube and the way content is generated and the way actors and musicians are connecting with fans and being more, you know, publicly honest with their lives and the things that happen with them, whether it's, you know, a short TikTok or a YouTube video podcast, because they're all doing podcasts now, apparently. But there's much more connection there. So being able to look back and see this, just, it's, shifts my perspective on a lot of the things I took for granted growing up and realizing just how much these movies affected me, but also how this look at some of these people who made those movies. Just even now, I can identify with or relate to, or maybe to some degree understand through my own journey and experience. If I definitely recommend this for anybody who uh, of the Gen X era who loved those teen movies and loved the movies from the Brat Pack and the Brat adjacent ones, whether it's you know the early Tom Cruise or you know Leah Thompson and you know all of that generation, James Spader. But looking back at those teenage coming of age movies in the eighties and the early nineties. This you might find interesting there. It, it's all perspective. So, you know, gauge the honesty of it as you will. Because, you know, I, I've never I've very much learned not to take everything at face value. But there's an earnestness here that I find appealing. So I definitely recommend checking out this documentary. Just even if you want some context to the history of the Brat Pack. And that group and that time. Or if you're a kid who's, you know, discovering these older movies and you just want to take a look at this moment where Hollywood changed. It's worth a look. And, you know, on Hulu or, you know, find it as you can, depending on where you are. It's definitely worth a watch. It's not terribly long, but it was definitely interesting. And it gave me some food for thought. So, uh, yeah, there's a long winded way to say go check out that documentary. Uh, thanks for watching. I might do more reviews of movies and stuff in the future to go along with my game stuff. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, do the things. And uh, I'll see you later.